Hey friends, today I am introducing my friend Jeff Markraff, who back in 2017 had a terrible, terrible motorcycle accident to the point where he almost died. And he's going to share his testimony with us today. He's going to share what he learned and also how he's doing today and how God has changed his life. All right, so joining me here today to talk about his story is Jeff. And I'm very thankful that you chose to come back on, Jeff, and do this with me because, fun fact, we did this interview a year ago. (laughs) And uh, yeah, there was actually a handful of problems that happened with the one a year ago. Because remember, I I had you do the whole interview and I forgot to record you. I did. (laughs) Well, we did half of it or most of it, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I yep. totally forgot to hit the record button. I'm like, yep. thank you so much, Jeff. So this is technically the third time he's doing this interview with me. So, <laughs> all right, Jeff. So why don't you share with the audience a little bit about yourself? Tell me about you. What do you like to do? Um, well, I like to be outside a lot. I'm kind of adventurous. I I hunt and I fish. You know, I'm a guy. I'm a I'm a caveman guy. I do a lot of things, you know, out in the woods and outside. I like the outdoors. I've mm-hmm. uh, been like that ever since I was younger. Um, always grew up being outside. My outside is is where I like to do things and and have fun um, out what the Lord's created for me. Absolutely. I'm not an inside TV guy, book guy, unless it's the Bible. But um, I'm outside if I can be. All the time. And you know, I, I've had your fish before and it's very good. It is very good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did it, enjoy it. It's the Lord's fish. He provided it for me out on the lake. But <laughs> yeah. I did catch it. <laughs> yeah. So Jeff can Jeff can do a lot of things. He fishes, he hunts, he cooks the fish that he makes. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what did your life look like before your accident? Because one, one thing Jeff is going to talk to us about today is the fact that he got into a very serious accident. And so we're going to talk about that. But before we get into the details of that, Jeff, what did your life look like? What did you do as a career um, before your accident? So I've done a lot of things. Um I've worked uh, in nurseries before. I've worked in precast before doing stuff with concrete. Um, like I say, with the nurseries, I was in irrigation. I never really worked in any factories or anything. It was always like uh, precast. Um, after that, I got into some maintenance stuff, um, electrical stuff, drywall, just different odds and ends jobs here. Um, I worked for uh, Coit Cleaning. And restoration. I was a fleet supervisor there. I had 42 trucks under my realm and I was the only mechanic and I was the only manager. So I managed myself and, and had 42 trucks that I took care of. And that was a big job. Um, I did that for about three years. It was before my accident. Um, and then I figured I needed to come home. So I transferred from there. I got a job in maintenance at the uh, UH hospitals. I really liked doing that stuff. I was not only did I do maintenance in the hospitals, but I was able to talk to the people at work and talk to some of the patients when you had to go in their rooms and stuff. So I was, I, I enjoyed doing that a lot. Um, but during that time is when uh, the Lord had something different for me. So during that time is, uh, is when I got, when I was in my accident. So. Mm-hmm. So can you share the details of your accident? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I still remember the whole thing. Uh, it was uh, a week after Father's Day in 2017. It was, uh, it was June 25th. It was about 2.15 in the afternoon. Um, I had gotten on my motorcycle after church, and I went for a short ride. I remember looking down at my speedometer and I was doing about 43 mile an hour and I seen this car on the right side and I seen it come to a, a like a rolling stop, like I call it a California stop. It kind of rolled to a stop and then right away 
I seen it kind of come out into the road and I said to myself out loud, this ain't going to be good. Um, so immediately I downshifted. Um, I tried to lay the bike down on the left side because this car was coming across and going into the opposite lane heading north. Um, so I tried to lay it down and go past this car, but unfortunately it was, it was an older woman in there and she kind of froze a little bit and she sped up into me and we hit head on. Um, the bike was kind of laid down on the left-hand side. And when she come across into me, the bike stood up um, sideways into the front of her car. And my body told her car out and her car told my bike out. So it was, uh, it was a pretty good impact. Um, I'm so fortunate that I had my helmet on and I had my riding boots on and all that. Because if not, I would have, I probably wouldn't be doing this interview right now. Mm -hmm. I remember last time we did this interview, you said that you, you saw her in the car. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I hit the, when I hit the car. It was so amazing that I could remember all that and I could visually see. I, I kind of looked at her um, as I was going over the hood um, and I could see her face looking at me like in this awe, like she's couldn't, you know, not believing what had just happened. You know, she was, I know she didn't see me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just, it happened so quick for her. Um, she was an elderly woman. She was in her, her, her uh, early 80s. Um, and yeah, I hit, I hit the car. I did see her as I flew over the hood. Uh, I flew about 40 feet. I don't know how, how high up I was, uh, but when I hit the pavement, um, my helmet in the back, it, it had a, like a three inch crack in the back. It was like a half helmet. So I had a really bad impact on the ground with my head. I'm so thankful that I had the helmet on. If not, like I said, I wouldn't be here. But my foot um, got pinched between my uh, um, what do they call them? They don't call them crash bars. They call them, you know, the bars that hang out for uh, the engine protectors is what they were. When the front of the bike hit, her bumper bent the one engine protector into my foot, and that's what got caught, and that's what almost ripped my foot off. So I had severe damage to my my right foot. Um, when I came to, um, there was a there was a guy that was there. I was trying to get up, and he was holding me down, saying, no, "You can't get up." And uh, I remember looking up and my bike was still running. And I told him, I says, go over there and shut that bike off because it was running at a high RPM. Um, I didn't know the damage it was done on it yet. Uh, I remember looking up and my right foot was laying at a 90 degree angle. I had split that uh, my ankle bone in half and my uh, right uh, big bone in my leg had come through the ankle. It was like splitting a log with a with a hatchet and my bone was hanging out of my foot uh, about three and a half inches i noticed that when we got into the hospital i was awake the whole time so the guy wouldn't let me get up we took my helmet off uh i had him go over and shut the bike down um i did i did i did have a and i still do i had a ccw i had a handgun on me but it wasn't in my waistband no more it had coming out through the impact and I knew that there was uh, kids in the neighborhood, so I was very adamant <clears throat> that he found that handgun, so no one, no, no kids would find that. So, and he did, which I was very lucky. He he found that. Um, he gave it to a police officer who was actually a neighbor, um, which was very fortunate. The neighbor was was coming around the corner, so that was taken care of. So we got that off the street. I was really worried about that. But after that, I remember getting in the ambulance, uh, people talking to me. We went up to the hospital. I remember going into the emergency room and they cut my boot off. And that's when I could see the damage. It was on my my uh, right foot. I didn't know at the time my my right elbow was actually shattered, too. I, I, I don't remember it. I don't. Uh, I remember trying to point to my bike. And not being able to extend my arm out all the way, I can only like move it at a 90 degree angle. I didn't know, I had no pain in that though. I didn't really have any pain anywhere. Um, even after they cut my boot off in the hospital and uh, 
course, I knew the, the, the nurses that were there. I worked with them. So I was talking to them kind of, you know, the way I do, just joking around the best I could. And they were kind of like, um, kind of uh, amazed at that I was awake through this and that I had a pretty decent, good spirit about it, you know. And then so I remember. Why, why do you think that you had such a good spirit through it? Um, well, I knew the Lord was with me. Um. I'm a firm believer in that. I knew he was there. Um, and I knew he saved me from that because it, uh, it, not at the time I didn't, but after I looked at the, you know, I got the video from uh, the um, sheriff's department when they took pictures of the accident. And after I looked at that, seeing where the impact was and where I landed and all that, I knew that, that I knew that God had a purpose for me. I, I knew that there was a reason that I, that I uh, didn't go home yet. So still after all these years, it's uh, still you know, really emotional for me. Because there was a heart transportation, uh, transformation that uh, happened through all that. So, but yeah, I was just in good spirits. I don't know if it was because I was alive um, and I didn't have pain. And I'm kind of like that in situations when it comes like that. I kind of, I try to be open and joking and, you know, just, you know, try to try to have a, a good feeling about every situation you're in. So, yeah, I was, uh, I was pretty, I was okay. People told me that hey, you were telling jokes and you remembered everything. And I guess I was complaining about just, uh, polishing my boots up that day and they had to cut them off me and you know stuff like that so but yeah so then then there came the plane ride or the helicopter ride um they took me out to uh i remember getting in the helicopter and they had me strapped down and i remember trying to sit up because i wanted to see the ride and the the doctor nurse that was back there kept pushing me down saying you cannot sit up you have to lay still um, you have great trauma on your uh, right foot and on your elbow. That's when I first knew I had trauma on my elbow. Um, so I kind of still tried to peek out the window to see how high we were and all that. But it was about a 21-minute ride. I remember asking the, the nurse how long it took, or the doctor. I think he was an e EMT nurse. He goes, 21 minutes. And I remember landing. Um, I don't remember coming out of the helicopter. I remember getting down to the ER room and uh, the doctor came down and he looked at my foot and he says, I don't think I can do anything with this. And I remember saying, well, I'm not ready to die yet. If you got to saw it off, go ahead and amputate it. And uh, he goes, well, hold on a minute. There was another doctor that was uh, specialized in this. He was on vacation at the time and they called him in. And uh, I remember, I remember at that time waiting, waiting between uh, the one doctor telling me he couldn't do nothing about it and the next one coming in. And I was looking around and I noticed in front of me, you know, off a little ways, there was these two growing men and they were just bawling, just, you know, crying. And I'm looking around and I'm like, well, who are these guys? Who are these guys crying? And I'm trying to look to my right and to my left and going, who else is down here with me? I said, someone's in serious shape. And then when I look back at them, I noticed they were two of, uh, two of my good friends from church that uh, had, had come there, had, had found out about it. And that's when I realized it. I think I was in pretty bad, bad shape at the time. So yeah, it was it was two good friends of mine uh, that I'm really still very close to. Um, and uh, matter of fact, one of them right now is going through. He still comes to our church, and he's going through some very traumatic things in his life right now. So, um, but yeah, after that, the the doctor did show up, and uh, I remember him 
looking at it. He goes, I think I can do something with this. And then I remember him grabbing my foot. And I'm watching him. And he pulled back on it to see what that bone was going to do as it's sticking out of my foot. And that's when I passed out. I don't remember anything other than that. And then the, the, the week in the hospital, I was in and out. I had two surgeries, two surgeries on my ankle, one surgery on my elbow at the time. Um, I was only in the hospital for like seven or eight days and they transferred me to a rehab center. Um, when I was in a rehab center, I was in a wheelchair. Um, I had a fixator on my foot, which is this metal bracket with pins going into my foot because he had it set a certain way. I had nine pins in my foot and he didn't have to put any pins in my elbow. He had to shave some of the bones down so I could move my arm again. So, but I remember being in rehab and all I had was my left foot and my left arm. And the, one of the nurses there, she goes, well, you're going to be here as long as it, it, until you can start doing things on your own, you'll be here because you're right-handed dominant and foot and all that. So they thought I was going to be there for a while. So I made up my mind at that time, I wasn't going to be there that long. So I did everything on my own with my left hand, my left foot. I got up, I hopped, I walked, I grabbed things. I was in rehab after that traumatic accident for one week. Hmm one week and I says I'm ready to go home and they go well you passed everything so you did and I went home after a week so I was very fortunate with that I remember one time I was standing there and you had to do um uh what is it uh physical therapy and uh occupational therapy where you had to like learn how to fold clothes or maybe put dishes away and I remember I was doing a puzzle and I'm standing on my left foot because I got this big fixator on my right foot. I can't put no weight on my right foot. I pull my right foot up. It's got extra weight on it. And I'm doing this puzzle. And somebody reaches around and takes the puzzle that I just put in it out of the puzzle thing. And I'm like, and I didn't look at who it was. And I picked the puzzle thing up and I put it back there. I said, it goes right there. And the person picked it up again and took it out. And I looked over and it's Pastor Mike. <laughs> he was there to visit me. He was messing with me. I didn't realize it until I looked over and seen who it was. I'm like, okay, that's Pastor Mike. Yeah, that so, sounds like something Pastor Mike. Yeah, that was yeah. great that he showed up and he yeah. spent some time with me that day. And I had um, some other friends come out there from church. Uh, one of them came from Florida up um, and visited me. So it was, it was great in that rehab center. I remember there was a time when I was able to push myself out, outside. I think it was like two days into it. And the woman's like, well, you can go outside as long as you can get in and out. Well, I got in and out, no problem. And she's seen that. So she goes, well, you need to make sure you come back in because I would go out there and sit for a while. And she thought I was going to leave because I told her, I says, yeah, I could just leave out of here. So she had eyes on me the whole time because she thought I was going to leave the rehab center because that's how bad I wanted to get out of there. I could not stay in the wheelchair. Um, yeah. But I remember going out. Uh, into the courtyard there, and there was a couple a couple that came through, and something had happened to uh, his brother, I believe, and he was kind of down, and I just felt the Holy Spirit come up upon me, and that this man needed something to be said to him, so I asked him to come over, and uh, he goes, yeah, what's up? I says, hey, how are you? I says, it just came over me that you need to hear something from the Lord, and and I quoted uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 about not being anxious about things, about how the Lord has everything under control and we can pray to him uh, with prayer petition. He'll take care of everything. And, and I remember that guy saying, he goes, man, that's one thing I needed today so bad. And, you know, I, I felt good that I was able to, to give that to him. So there was other opportunities, too, and I had in the rehab that I actually was evangelizing about who Christ was and not even thinking about it. It just started happening. I had never really done that before. It just, I was in this situation that the Lord had, and I believe like it talks in, in, in first Peter, that sometimes the Lord puts you in situations that he wants you in for a reason. And I believe that's why I was there. 
So can you share, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you share a little bit about your faith before your accident and then a little bit more about after your accident? Well, how was your faith before your accident? So, so, so my faith and my belief in God and Jesus Christ was strong, but did I profess it? No. Did I, was I in the word all the time? No. Should I have been? Absolutely. We should all be. But after the accident, to this day, um, you can't get me out of it. I'm in the word every day. Um, I've, I, I teach, I mean, one of the things that I love to do is I like to teach the word. I like to teach over the scriptures. Um, I have a couple different groups of, of people that I, that I meet with. One's a, a young group of some very younger people than me. They're in their early 20s. Um, that is just awesome. We've been doing it now for about almost two years. Um, we're right now going through the book of Revelation. We've gone to the book of Matthew. We've gone to the book of John. And they've, they've come so far from when they first started meeting to where they are now. It's just, it's amazing to hear how they talk about what goes on during the day with them. I also meet with some guys at church on Sunday before Sunday service. I've done that two or three different groups now. Um, it's just, it, it awakens my heart because through this accident, I've had that heart transformation. I understand that the Lord has a purpose for me and what that purpose is. He wants me to teach. He wants me to teach the word. And that's what I so enjoy doing. Hmm. Always come up when you're in the word. You, there's so many times I've read the Bible cover to cover three or four different times now. And every time I go into it, I see something that I didn't see before. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so awesome. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Now, the time when I was home, though, that was a dark time for me. When I got home from the rehab and I was in a wheelchair, that was that was that was a time of darkness for me. That was when I didn't know what I was going to do. I'm like I said before, I'm this outdoor adventurous, hunting, fishing, doing things. I got a foot that might not ever work. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to be able to ride my bicycle. I like to ride bicycles. Um, I like to go hiking. And now I got this piece of metal on my foot. And there were some long nights, long prayers, long wondering what's next. And that's what really got me back into the word. And I started journaling for the first time. And I had this, this notebook where I journaled for probably it was six or seven months. It was six months that I journaled in here to the point. And after six months, um, I did go out and buy another motorcycle. I was still on crutches. I got on it with a boot on my foot and rode it around the, the neighborhood. Um, and, and why? Well, <laughs> Just like when people get in, you know, when they love horses, right? And they get thrown off a horse and then like might break an arm, break a hip. Do they get rid of all their horses? No, they, they get back on the horse, right? So I was not going to be fearful of a motorcycle. And after six months, I bought another bike. And when I finally got that boot off, I took that motorcycle, a different one, and I took it for that same ride that I was on. And when I got past where my accident was, I had this overcoming relief on me. And I've never thought about it again. It doesn't affect me one bit getting on a motorcycle and riding around. Do I know it? I can get in an accident again? Absolutely. But I know the Lord's with me. And I know he'll never forsake me. He'll never leave me when I'm on these rides with my motorcycle. Because he knows that's what I like to do. So he's there with me. And I trust in him. And if it happens again, either I'm going to go home or he's going to pull me through it again. So I'm good to go with it. And a lot, a lot of people ask, like what you did, why? <laughs> Most people tell me you're crazy to get back on another motorcycle. I'm like, that's just who I am. Yeah. So you didn't want to live in fear, basically, is what you're saying. No, no, no. I wouldn't. I didn't want to live in fear. Uh -uh. I enjoy riding motorcycle. I had one ever since I was, I think I was like seven or eight years old. It was in a, it was literally in a basket, uh, a milk crate, and I brought it home and rebuilt it. And I've been riding motorcycles ever since. 
So I, I wanted to go back to, before you share your story of being at home, just the significance of the injury in your foot. Because I remember you told me last time that it was a break pretty much unlike any yeah. that they had seen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so can you share about that? Yeah. So the doctor is is Dr. George Ochangeli, is his name? Um. And it had, it had only been done three other times, this uh, what they call a log splitter break. Um, and mine was worse than the other ones. So when he did the surgery on me, it was logged and it's in medical books now, the procedure that he did. Um, because it was during the time when I was still in a wheelchair and I was going in on checkups and all that, he had some young interns in there and was showing his work on my foot to these young interns. And that's when I learned um, that he had documented this in the medical records and that, that the surgery he performed because it was so intricate and in how he had to do it was in the medical books at that time. So that was, that was kind of cool. I mean, not that I liked the injury, but it was kind of cool that um, he took the time to actually do this for me because the other doctor said that's beyond me I, I would just amputate it um but he took the time he you know he's and the, I, I got to know him very very well in the time i saw him and he was very very good very good had good bedside manner he was a very good doctor he was very good very good yeah so now you're back home after rehabilitation and you've had some dark days. Can you share a little bit more about that? Um, so, yeah. So, so my wife now is going to work and I'm sitting at home in a wheelchair. And there is absolutely nothing for me to do because I can't get up. I can't go outside. I can't do anything. Um, I, I did, was able to slide myself down the basement stairs one time well, more than one time and back up without my wife knowing because if she would, she's a nurse herself. So she would have known she probably would have smacked my other foot. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, the, the marriage was hard because I, I couldn't, I mean, my wife is, she's the best. She's, you know, she, she took care of me. She went up above and beyond. Um, but she's the best. I love that woman with all my heart. Um, but it was hard because here now my wife is bringing the income into the house and I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk again. Um, and through all the, the physical therapy and all that, uh, yeah, our marriage was, it was strained just a little because of my, of me being a guy, being a caveman, not realizing what she was going through. And it wasn't until um, I was out of that wheelchair and was doing therapy and learning how to walk again that I realized all the pressure and stuff and the trauma that she went through, you know, doing that, going through that stuff, getting the phone call, knowing her husband was hitting the motorcycle and didn't look good. You know, I never thought about that stuff before until it actually happened. So um, there was some... The, the the dark days was just me being at home and not being able to do anything. And I dreaded when night came because I would lay in bed and I couldn't sleep. There's so many things going through my head about what is next. What is next? And I was anxious about things. And I had to constantly pray to the Lord. Lord, I know this is in your hands. Help me to understand that. Help me to know the you have a purpose for me and you're going to lead me in the right, in the right way. And once I understood that and gave that up, everything just, uh, everything just flowed together about how my life is now. So how long do you think it took you to, to give up those fears and to surrender? Uh, it was probably, uh, it was probably about six months afterwards. By the time, you know, I was healed up enough that I could, I could stand up. I could kind of walk with a cane or walk with one crutch. 
Um, I had gotten a motorcycle. I had made that that journey again through there, and I and I broke through that fear of getting in an accident and seeing and feeling all that stuff. And and I understood now that the Lord wants me here for a purpose. So my heart was transformed after that time. I had I didn't have any dark days anymore like that. Like I say, I, I got into the word. I started journaling things. I started realizing things that I had never seen before, felt before, or understood before. It's just the Holy Spirit opened up my mind, opened up my heart. And I just was receiving this stuff and I understood what was being said in the word. And it was just so awesome. I had I had quite a few two really good friends that helped me through it too. Um, that was constantly calling me and talking to me and quoting stuff to me and going through the word with me. And it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. The, the people that were behind me that I didn't realize, the prayers that went out that I didn't realize. And prayer is so, so powerful and important when people are going through struggles like that. It's just, it's awesome. So yeah, before I was teetering, I was a, yeah, I was a Christian but I wasn't devote like I am now. I'm totally different. I, I feel I've had that heart transformation. I know it. I feel it. I understand it. And I love it. For a lot of us men, you know, we, we, we do things. We go to work. We call home. We have our families. We have our wives and all that. We, a lot of us men are always, why am I here? What's my purpose? You know, well, I feel as though it's revealed to me that I need to start sharing the word with other men. I, I need to start really getting in some depth when it comes to conversations about really what life's about, about really who Jesus Christ is and what he can do for you. So it gave me depth. And that's, that's when I know my heart was transformed into just, okay, yeah, I'm a Christian to now I am a Christian and I swear by it and I do feel it. And this is who I am and this is what I'm supposed to do. And this is my purpose now. Are you still struggling in any way because of the accident physically? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's been what, six, six, seven years now. I don't, not doing math in public, but um, it's been a while now. And the arthritis in my elbow and in my ankle is bad. Um, I thought for a long time after I healed up from it, like in 2019, I thought, oh man, you know, I can go back to work because I had to apply for a uh, social security disability SSI. I mean, there's no way I couldn't, I couldn't work. Um, so I had to get an advocate a group and I was able to get social security, which it, it, it helps pay some bills here, but it's, I keep telling myself, I got to go back to work. And then I tried to do something like around here for like six hours on my feet. Can't do it. I got maybe four hours and I got to get off my foot. I got sometimes there's days I've only got two hours. There's sometimes in the morning when I wake up, I got to walk around the house for about two and a half, three hours with a cane because it's just so painful. Um, beautiful days like today, you know, it says we're going to have high heat all next week. My elbow and my ankle is killing me. And I don't know why it used to be when I could tell when rain was coming. Well, now it's just, I can tell when the day's coming because it's, it's still very painful. Um, it's just Advil and Tylenol, you know? And like I said, I just work through it. I don't complain about it. I don't say too much about it. The wife always asks me, how are you feeling today? I says, fine. Well, she can see, I can barely walk, but I don't say nothing about it. I just, I go on. This is, this is how the Lord wants me right now. This is, this is, this is the way I am and I accept it. Yeah. But, you know, um, I just want to say that, um, Jeff is probably one of the most strong people that I know. And I'm not even trying to say that, you know, to, to butter him up. <laughs> <laughs> I truly believe that because when I first heard the details of, Jeff's accident when he shared it with me last year, when we initially did this interview, I was like, wow, I had no clue he was struggling in that way. Because even though I was attending church with him back in 2017, I didn't really know Jeff, but 
I knew there was something going on with Jeff because I remember hearing all the prayer requests and everything that was going on at that time. And my husband, Garrett, was very upset about it. And he was like, we got to pray for Jeff. But I didn't know the extent of how bad it was until he shared it with me last year. You, I wouldn't say you hit it well, but you were, you had this like strength to you that nobody would ever know how much you went through if you didn't tell them. Well, I've always, I've always tried to be um, strong in that aspect. I, I never wanted or will play the victim of anything like that. It was, uh, it was God sent. Um, the accident physically was terrible on my body. Um, but the accident, accident spiritually was awesome. And I do it again because of what I got out of it, but I will not play the victim on stuff like that. I, I just, I, it's something I went through. Um, it's between, my wife and I, my family, and the Lord. And um, I don't really say too much about any of it unless, you know, someone asks like you, you are. And and I'm still kind of hesitant with it because who wants to hear about some old man that got an accident? But um, it's very, it's, for me, it was very powerful. And like I say, spiritually, I would do it all over again. Physically, and I'm not really into it, but <laughs> but spiritually, the heart transformation that happened through that, and it's and it's kind of if you think about it, if I think about it, which I do, um, man, it took that much. It took that much of the Lord telling me, dude, I got something different for you to do. I mean, that's kind of stiff necked if you think about it. Um, that it took that much. For him, for me to finally realize who he wanted and what he wanted me to do. But now that I'm there, I see things a lot different. I understand things a lot different. I enjoy every day I get up and, uh, and I can look outside, whether it's rain, snow, or sunny. I'm thankful to be here because I know there's something he wants me to do. Well, thank you, Jeff. That was an awesome testimony. Is there any last things you would like to say uh, before we end the interview? I just appreciate you uh, asking me to do this. Like I say, it's 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 hard for me sometimes. It's always going to be. I still get emotional from it. And I hope someone can get something out of this. But we all have a purpose. And, uh, and the Lord's always in our lives if we want him to be there. So I thank you for uh, having me on. Well, thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. Okay.